Hi, my name is Lorraine Ball and I am a social networking junkie. To be perfectly honest with you, my addiction started pretty mild. There was Plaxo and LinkedIn and then Squidoo and Blogger. Those are some old blogging platforms, but that's where I got my start. But these were the gateway to Flickr for photos, Facebook and Twitter, YouTube, Dig, Delicious, Stumble, then Pinterest and Tumblr. Well, yes, then there was Instagram and WordPress and on and on. And I woke up one morning and this was my life. I was spending hours every day jumping from network to network. And the truth was that it wasn't very productive. I knew that I needed to do something and so I developed a 12-step program to cure my addiction. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not looking to completely give up social networking, but I am trying to manage it and make it more productive as a business tool. Step number one for me was defining my objective. You need to figure out if you are a social networking junkie and you think that you're spending too much time really asking yourself, why are you doing it? If it's social, then do it after hours, do it on your own time. But if it's business, what are you trying to accomplish? Build brand awareness, drive traffic to your website, generate leads for a specific product offering. Whatever those objectives are, write them down. Pick two or three and treat this like any other marketing. The next thing that you need to do is you need to choose your audience. Who is it that you want to talk to? Who are you trying to reach? And please don't tell me everyone. The Mary Kay lady that says anyone with skin is, is her customer is kidding herself. She's not going to do a good job of reaching anyone. Once you choose your audience, it makes it easier to do several things. It makes it easier to figure out who you're talking to, so what you should say, and it makes it easier to figure out on which platforms you should be participating. When you choose your audience, it's easier to get clarity around the personality that you want to bring, and it's easier to figure out, again, how do you want to approach them. One of my favorite Twitter accounts is Sue the T-Rex. This is actually a marketing account for the Natural History Museum in Chicago. But what they decided was that they were really trying to build interest among a younger generation, not children, but people in their 20s and 30s who maybe had enjoyed the museum as kids and had forgotten how interesting it could be as adults. And so this account is really designed to capture the attention and engage with millennials. <clears throat> In contrast, this is Betty Crocker. They know that their community are, for the most part, moms. And so they participate and are extremely active on Facebook. And they share beautiful images of food and recipes, and it works. That's where their community hangs out. So again, you've got this sea of platforms, and as you begin to define your audience, it's easy to give yourself permission to let some of them go by the wayside. Goodbye, Foursquare. And maybe narrow it down. For most businesses, if you are not in a marketing profession, even five social platforms might be too many. Remember, this is what I do for a living. But this is significantly more manageable than the chaos. Now you know who you're talking to and you know where you're going to participate. Next step, find your voice. The Randall Beans Company has two very different communities. One is their older traditional customer, probably someone who shops for family meals. 
You'll find them at Kroger. You'll find them at Walmart. But they also have Again, trying to engage that next generation. They have a sub-brand called Powered by Beans. And this is really targeted, again, at that sort of younger, hipper, more millennial customer. And so you might see the same recipe, but you're going to see them presented very differently with very different words. The Powered by Beans language is going to be more flip, more engaging. The Randall beans, much more straightforward. Let's take another look at Sue the T-Rex. I love this. Um, this was a tweet uh, the day after, or actually late on St. Patty's Day. And the messaging is, hey, at Field Museum is open later today. Museums are usually quiet with lots of water fountains. So it's a good place to walk off yesterday's fun. It's funny. It catches the attention of people who totally can identify with the messaging. And they may not go to the museum the day after St. Patrick's Day, but they'll remember it. This was a Facebook update from Axe Deodorant. And their target audience, frat boys, young male millennials. This is funny to a frat boy. Headbutt your keyboard and then post the results. It's the kind of thing that a young guy would do just for fun. And the responses were funny and it was totally on point. But just as easily as you can endear yourself to an audience and create a community with your voice, you can kind of turn them off when you lose it. This is an example of um, the at Brewhouse Twitter account. And they go back and forth. They go through periods where Scott Wise at Brewhouse has a lot of personality and it's very clearly him. And when the account looks like that, it's very engaging and people connect with it. And then it starts to look like this. We're open at 11. Kids eat free. Join us for four great drink specials. Get pizza and beer delivered tonight. And it's very robotic. There's no engagement. There's, it's all about the promotion. And as this starts to happen, you will notice that people stop liking, sharing, and commenting. So just as quickly as you can build a community, you can lose the community. When it comes to social media, you have to remember that social media is a lot like a singles bar. It is a place where you can go and meet a lot of people, have a lot of conversations, but your end game is to bring your date home. It, your end game is to bring people back to your website to engage with you and to move through your sales funnel. And so that's why I am so passionate about this idea of starting with your blog, using that as the origination point and the jumping off, off point for all of your other social media activities. Your content on your blog is reusable code. Here are two examples of blog posts. See how they end up in the LinkedIn timeline? This is what it could look like on Facebook or on Twitter. Bottom line is that if you start with your blog, you have content that you can use and share everywhere. The next step to making this manageable is to create a schedule. Instead of just being on social media all day, every day, use scheduling tools to schedule your content and then ahead of time, but then give yourself a specific time that you know you're going to hop on for 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at the end of the day to do the more interactive stuff. Leaving it on all day long can be interesting and entertaining, but it can also be very distracting and a time suck. So what we typically like to do 
um, both for our customers and and for ourselves is we plan our con we plan our core content and we know we have a series of updates all day every day on each of the platforms that we want to be on and then when we have time we can jump in and add the more interactive add the uh, sharing and liking other people's content and responding to comments and so it gives the impression that we're in it that we are actively engaged much more often than we are. The next thing is on social media you want to be original and I hear from a lot of people, well I'm in a boring industry, I, you know there's nothing that interesting or creative and I'm going to say nonsense. Every industry can be original. One of the first things I want you to do is avoid the formulas. Um, Yes, numbers work, and sometimes you want to use a number in your headline. But remember and that that's going to make you sound like everybody else. Just for fun, I did two common headlines, five tips for better and ten reasons you suck at, and take a look at what happens. All these blog posts come up. So if you use this strategy as your only strategy for your blog posts and your status updates, guess what? You're going to get lost in a sea of repetitiveness. And any industry can be original. We had a friend of ours who was working at an insurance company and they did travel insurance. And yeah, travel destinations are interesting, but they wanted to really grab people's attention. And so they created this infogram, the guide to zombie survival, the zombie attacks, the types of attacks you might encounter, know your enemy. This was really about how to plan and pack for a trip, but this was hysterical. It was so funny and it was shared over and over and over again and brought them so much visibility and so many new fans. One piece of great content will pay off over and over and over again as it's shared and reshared and rediscovered by new people six months, a year, two years later. Be visual. Um, when I first created this 12-step program back in 2013, I knew it was important. It has become even more so as we see LinkedIn and Twitter enlarging their image presentation, as we see Facebook adding slideshows and carousels. It is all about the picture. And the picture can be simple. It can be a photograph. It can be a graphic. It can be a very simple message that is stark and gets your attention. For St. Patrick's Day, dunk me, I'm Oreo. I loved this one. Um, also Oreo cookies, we come in peace. This was after the Mars rover landing, and you see the little tracks. Now these guys have got professionals, and this is what allowed them to create the famous, you can still dunk in the dark when the lights went off during the Super Bowl. And the truth is that most small businesses don't have the resources to have a graphic designer standing by in case of emergency. But that's okay, because images like this can be as compelling and as interesting as the professional ones. That sense of energy, uh, that sense of, oh, that's a band I want to hear, or my God, that's a pretty jar. Those images can be as compelling and as interesting. You have to be responsive. And this, this is why we schedule time, but then we also make sure that we hop on live every single day. Because people expect you to respond. Again, this is one of my favorite examples of clever response. You don't have to have a full-time graphic designer to do this. This would have been funny even if they had simply said, what can we say, Daryl? You unlocked our twisted little secret. 
Now, the fact that they did have a graphic designer who could create this cute little unicorn, which at the time was the symbol for um, the magic, I think, in Oreo cookies, was what made it a lot more viral. However, even in text, just that response would have gotten interaction. You're not Oreos, but you can still be clever and responsive. When and responsiveness can be something as simply as acknowledging that someone has made a comment. Social media is about ego. And people comment and post and share things because they want to be acknowledged. So go ahead and acknowledge them. Create hashtags and respond. If you're running an event, if you are promoting a venue, if you're promoting a particular business conference, create a hashtag which allows you to follow the conversations and then jump in and respond when people comment to you. And at the end of the day, this is about business, so you need to measure the results. If your objective is to drive traffic to your business, Recognize that recovery from your addiction is an ongoing process. On a regular basis, I look at how a particular blog post did and check and see, did it get traffic and where did the traffic come from? I can look at this on uh, over time and you can see search engines are important, but you know what? So is Twitter, so is Google+, and so is Facebook. And in addition to looking at where the traffic is coming from, it gives me an opportunity to see what are people interested in. And the analytic tools on Facebook and on LinkedIn are equally solid, and you can look at each platform and see what do people like. And once you understand what they like, it's easy to give them more of the same. And steps 11 and 12 are really start again and again. This is a process of continuous refinement. If you've been successful on a particular social media platform, stay there. But pay attention because over time that platform shifts and you have to shift with it. You have to adjust your strategy. You have to adjust what you're doing. I will always be a social networking junkie, but I can manage my addiction. If you'd like help managing yours, I'd love to talk to you.